Good morning from Fresh Start. What a blessing it is to be back in the house of the Lord. Uh, in the 122nd Psalm, verse 1, it says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And I know what David meant. What a place it is to come in and shut the doors and uh, put the world outside for a while. And uh, a place of refuge, a, 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 a place that you and I can hide and get away from the world in the clevis of the rock. Amen. And uh, we thank the Lord for that this morning. We're going to be in our uh, Zechariah study this morning in the Minor Prophets, and we're going to be in chapter 11 and chapter 12 this morning. So if you would, open your Bibles with us this morning for this family Bible study hour. And while you're turning, we'll ask Father for his blessings. Precious Father, we come to you thanking you for another blessed day. We ask, Father, that you'd open eyes and open ears to your word. Allow your word to land on fertile ground, Father. And we'll give you the praise and give you the glory for all things. In the precious name of Christ, I pray. Amen. <clears throat> Zechariah chapter 11. Zechariah, meaning uh, in the Hebrew, remembered of Yah. And uh, if there's anything that I can do to exhort that statement, it would be that Father does remember you. And how is it that he's remembering you? He's given it to you in his word. What's going to happen and how he feels against these things that are against you uh, and against God's people. In uh, Zechariah 11, uh, this is speaking about the sheep traffickers. Moffat, he translated it as the Huskers. I, I can't pronounce that well. H-U-C-K-S-T-E-R-S. Huskers. And these are those that steal away the sheep, steal away God's people with their lying. And while I'm on that, I want to go to uh, Ezekiel 13. You know where I'm going. And I'm going to use verse 19. And it reads, and he said, I will, and, and will ye pollute me among my people for handfuls of barley and for pieces of bread to slay the souls that should not die and to save the souls alive that should not live by your lying to my people that hear your lies? I laid out a little bit of groundwork there for you to know what God's speaking about here in chapter 11. His issue here is against the shepherds, uh, those that uh, teach false doctrines. So as we start in chapter 11 and verse 1, and it reads, Open thy doors, O Lebanon, that the fire may devour the cedars. This fire he's talking about, it's in Hebrews 12 and 29, and it says that God is a consuming fire. Father is that fire that consumes. He's the one who takes away, and he's the one who gives. And for somebody to go against God and not utilize this road map that he's given you and I, I just don't understand. But I do know that there are many today that are not. So he says here uh, that the fire may devour the cedars, and these cedars are your false shepherds of the Christian nations today. These are those that lead astray God's people. Verse 2, Howl, fir tree, for the cedar is fallen. Because thy mighty are spoiled, howl, O ye oaks of Bashan, for the forest of the vintage is come down. And this forest is your people, and the vintage is the church. And so he's saying that he's going to destroy uh, this situation that uh, a lot of people like to play church and like to uh, go and, and assume that they're doing God a service. But what they're doing, they're going to a place that is of nothingness, a Beth of Ian, a place that is not teaching them the Word of God, a place that does not give them instructions. Uh, instructions for what? Well, <laughs> It's one of the mysteries of God, and you know it. This mystery being the Antichrist comes before the true Messiah. You know these things, but the world does not. Many people have heard it, but they don't want to take heed to it. 
They cannot believe it, but yet throughout all of God's word, he has plainly said how the Assyrian would come, how that, uh, that false shepherd would come, how that, that, and all these things happen before the Messiah comes. <clears throat> verse 3. Let me go back in verse 2. He says, uh, O ye oaks of Bashan, and the forest of the vintage is come down. This, Again, this vintage, he's speaking of the churches that uh, are teaching the false doctrines today. In Ezekiel chapter 34, we have what God has given you and I. <clears throat> Start reading about verse number 1. If you would, turn with me to Ezekiel chapter 34, and let's document what Father is saying. He said, And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Two, Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God unto the shepherds, Woe be to the shepherds of Israel that do feed themselves. Should not the shepherds feed the flocks? Question. It's a sad day when men or women are in a position and have a platform and have a large group of people to help about, but yet they do not care for themselves. Their mind is on the money. Their mind is on what they can gain from it. Three, you eat the fat and you clothe you with the wool. You kill them that are fed, but you feed not the flock. <laughs> That's what God's concern is. <clears throat> Four, the diseased uh, have you not strengthened, neither have you healed that which was sick, neither have you bound up that which was broken, neither have you brought again that which was driven away, neither have you sought that which was lost, but with force and with cruelty have you ruled them. They take this book and use it like a club. They take the word of God, the love letter that Father wrote to you and I, and they put people in bondage uh, in a preaching a gospel that a person can't live. I've heard men say before, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to say this. I've heard men say before that uh, once I was saved, uh, uh, I don't sin any longer. I don't sin no more. All my sins are forgiven. My Bible teaches me the man says he doesn't sin, he calls God a liar. We all fall short of the glory of God on a daily basis. It's meant for a man and a woman to recognize where they've fallen short and repent. Repent meaning coming back to the Father, coming back to the feet of the Savior. Five. And they were scattered because there is no shepherd. And they became meat to all beasts of the field when they were scattered. You can see that. You can see how that people are just unaware, and they do not know uh, that there are false preachers in this world today, false shepherds. Six, my sheep wandered through all the mountains. This is when they were scattered. And Upon every hill, yea, my flock was scattered upon all the face of the earth, and none did search or seek after them. Not one. Not one. No one had compassion for Israel. Seven. Therefore, ye shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. Eight. As I live, this is God swearing to himself, as I live, saith the Lord God, Surely because my flock became a prey, and my flock became meat to every beast of the field, because there was no shepherd, neither did my shepherds search for my flock, but the shepherds uh, fed themselves and fed not my flock. What's the 23rd Psalm say? The Lord is my shepherd. It is God that is the shepherd. He is the one over the flock, and those that are 
there to try to help out and to try to lead his people. These are, well, what the Bible calls hirelings. And they are not doing the job that God has asked them to do. Nine, therefore, O ye shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. Ten, thus saith the Lord God, behold, I am against the shepherds, and I will require my flock at their hand, and cause them to cease from feeding the flock. In other words, they will not be the Zadok. They will not. <laughs> they will not be in God's kingdom feeding the flock. Neither shall the shepherds feed themselves any more, for I will deliver my flock from their mouth that they may not be meat for them. That's, that's the strongness that God has against the shepherds. <laughs> Physical perversion is bad. In the flesh, it's a bad thing, but spiritual perversion is worse. God looks at spiritual perversion a whole lot worse than he does that of the physical. It stays with a person. It sticks to them. And it takes a lot of discernment and a lot of teaching to change the mind of, and of course, the Holy Spirit. If the Holy Spirit will work with that one. And it's a sad situation that a lot of people are in this morning. All right, back in Zechariah 11, verse number 3. This is a voice of howling of the shepherds, for their glory is spoiled. A voice of the roaring of young lions, for the, pre for the pride of Jordan is spoiled. He said here that the, the howling of the shepherds, uh, uh, for their glory, the glory of man is where they get their glory from. They have men that will pat them on the back and tell them what a wonderful revival we've had and what a great job you have done. Here's your money. Here's your check. That's what they're there for. A voice of roaring uh, young lions. For the pride of Jordan is spoiled. God's taken away the hunting places of the souls. God's taken away their places where they can go and be, well, they call themselves evangelists, or they call themselves uh, uh, preachers. And God's taken that away from them. Verse 4, Thus saith the Lord God, Feed the flock of the slaughter. You could close the book right there and say that we have taught God's word. It's so important that God's people understand his word. I'm going to ask you a question this morning. How many of you are hungry for the word of God? How many of you are expected to be fed this morning? Amen. That's right. We're expected that to be fed, Brother Randall. We've come to this ministry and that to be fed. And that's what God has asked to do. Feed the flock of the slaughter. Feed them. Not with milk. Not with salvation again. How many times must a man be saved? One time is plenty. Then you come to the knowledge of the truth and get on the meat of the word. That's what God's asked. It's such a sad situation. It's such a bad thing that people are misled and they, they seek after emotions. They love these churches that uh, keep them uh, exhorted and they assume that that's the Spirit of God and uh, they assume that that's all of, of the Lord. And uh, the Bible tells me that to try the spirits, see if they are of God or not. Did you learn anything? Did you leave the house of the Lord more confused uh, than you did when you walked in? If that be the case, that may not be where you need to be. I'm not telling you to leave your church. I'm telling you, you must be fed the word of God. The sands of the hourglass are running out, my friend. We don't have a whole lot of time left. And it's high time that people realize 
that there is a doctrine not to be taught. I had a man tell me one time, he said, I want you to preach this revival. I want you to come and tell in this revival. But look here, boy. Don't preach no doctrine. <laughs> well, my goodness. All scripture is given for doctrine and reproof. He didn't want his church to be misled through uh, the millennial reign and understand these things is what he was trying to say. That was a long time ago, many, many years ago. But I do understand that there are people that are needing to be fed today. You take Ezekiel 37, it, that, 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 that really lays out a, 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 a picture for you and I to realize that when you drive by a, a church and you see these people that are uh, coming and going and they, they aren't teaching them anything. They aren't teaching them the word of God. They are like dead, dry bones in the valley of death. That's where they are. It's sad. Verse number five. Verse number four again. Thus saith the Lord my God, feed the flock of the slaughter. Father wants you to be fed. And he wants those who said, I will be a God man. I will be the shepherd. I will do what God has asked me to do. You see, the Bible says that judgment begins right here. Right here. And if woe is me, if I'm not teaching the word of God, it must be taught line upon line and precept upon precept. You can't go in the middle of the Bible and pull out one scripture and call that your message. How are the people to know what the meaning and the subject is without the beginning to the end? That's what it takes. Therefore, you must have time to be able to do that. Cut out a lot of that singing. Cut out a lot of the jibber-jabber. And get down to the work of God. Get down to the word. That's something that is going to sustain a person. To help that man or woman. Give them something to think about. All right, verse 5. Whose possessors uh, slay them and hold themselves not guilty. And they that sell them say, Blessed be the Lord, for I am rich. And their own shepherds pity them not. Did you see that? That's exactly what God is seeing. <laughs> Although this was written <laughs> many, many years ago, but God sees it happening today. He prophesied it not only for that day, but for the day that you and I are living in. He sees it happening. They're stealing the outright, the, 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 the promises and the heritage that God has laid out for his children. People shouldn't do without. People should have what it takes to make it in this world. And by studying God's word, and now, what's the scripture say? That be ye a doer of the word and not hearers only. Those that do the word of God and those that are trying to help the kingdom and help Israel, the sheep, you can be blessed if. You knew the word of God. Many people don't, but God's children, the election, they understand. They understand what it is that God asked of them. Verse number six, he said, For I will no more pity uh, the inhabitants of the land, saith the Lord, but lo, I will deliver the men, every one, into his neighbor's hand and into the hand of his king. And they shall smite the land out of their hand, and I will not deliver them. This, uh, this king he's talking about, he said, into the hand of his king, this small K-I-N-G. He's talking about the Antichrist coming. These people are ripe on the vine. Those that do not know the word of God, they are ripe on the vine, waiting uh, for their king. And I will deliver them. Deliver them from what? They were involved in the wrong wedding. 
They were involved in the wedding that took prior before the coming of the Lord. That's why it says in Mark 13, 17, Woe to them that are with child and them that give suck in those days. It's such a sad situation, such a bad thing. And yet the people of the world don't see it. God's children see it. You see it. We've got to do something to try to help these people. We've got to do what we can to invite them to the house of the Lord into a ministry that understands and teaches the Word of God like it ought to be. And that's what God's children are for, the election, to spread the gospel, to spread the Word of God, to give them out understanding. Although many of them will reject it, but friend, let me say this. They will remember. One day, it will come to their remembrance what you have said. Do not get discouraged. Do not be dismayed in doing well. He said, for if we do well, then in due season we shall reap if we faint not. And that's the promise that God's given us. Verse 7. And I will feed the flock of slaughter, even you, O poor of the flock. And I took unto me two staves, the one I called beauty, and the other I called bands, and I fed the flock. This flock of the slaughter, or those that are taken by the Antichrist, God will feed them in that day. And he says, And I took unto me two staves, uh, <clears throat> the one I called beauty, and the other I called bands. And this beauty um, is uh, the grace of Jesus Christ. And the bands are union. So we know that he's talking about when Christ came. He said, And I called bands, and I fed the flock. Verse 8. Three shepherds also I cut off in one month, and my soul loatheth them, and their soul also arbored me. These three shepherds, these are your, um, your false priests and uh, the false ministers of the day, false Christian ministers, and the fake prophets. These are those who go against God's word, and they are those that are leading astray God's people. And their soul also arbored me. Jesus is going to clean house, amen? He's coming. As we get into chapter 14, you're going to see that what he does. Verse number 9. Then said I, I will not feed you that that dieth, let it die. And that that is to be cut off, let it be cut off. And let the rest eat every one the flesh of another. Why would God say that? Why would God say that those who die, let them die? He's talking spiritually here. We use this scripture many times. 2 Thessalonians, chapter 2, and verse number 10. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. 11. And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion, that they should believe a lie. 12. That they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. That's how God feels about it. If you don't want to, 2 Timothy 2 and 15, study to show thyself approved, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, if you don't want to put forth the effort and don't want to be a part of God's flock, that's what he said, I will not feed you. It will not come to them. And there are many today that feel that way. 
They feel as if they've got it all figured out. You speak with somebody that that uh, could use the Word of God and could be a help. It, oh, I've done got it all figured out. Is that right? Oh, yes, yes, yes. We've got it all figured out. My preacher told me that we're going to fly away and uh, there's no reason. And uh, we've got to a point where we don't even carry our Bible to church anymore. And uh, there's no reason to even open up our books. Uh, uh, I mean, we've all read it and uh, there's really no reason uh, to uh, concern ourselves. That's why the Bible teaches us that in that day, the day of the Lord, that paleness will come into their face because they will recognize that they have slept with the wrong one. They have been in the den with the Antichrist. Instead of waiting, being that chaste virgin, waiting on the true Christ. So he said in verse 9, Then said I, I will not feed you that that die. Let it die. Those that are spiritually dead, just let them die, he said. <laughs> and that that is to be cut off. Let it be cut off. And let the rest eat every one the flesh of another. And that's what they do, isn't it? That's what they do. They all are <clears throat> just all entangled in this theory, in this idea that does not line up with God's word. It doesn't take a very intelligent person to have to try to figure out that what they are teaching is not the truth. It doesn't take you long, friends, especially if you've heard the truth. It doesn't take you long uh, uh, to know whether or not a man or a woman is teaching correctly. Verse 10. And I took my staff, even beauty, and cut it asunder that it might that I might break my covenant, which I had made with all the people. And this staff, he's talking about Christ here. And that's what he done. He allowed him to be crucified. And he said, I took my staff, even beauty, and cut it asunder. This is Christ on the cross. And that I might break my covenant, which I had made with all the world. Through Christ this is where John 3 and 16 comes into play. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That is what God's promise is. 11. And it was broken in that day, and so the poor of the flock <clears throat> that waited upon me knew that it was the word of the Lord. <clears throat> these poor of the flock, he's speaking about uh, the Kenites. And it was, it was God's appointed time at that time. He said, I waited upon me for, new, <clears throat> for me and knew that it was the word of the Lord. They knew it was God's word. They knew it. Even the Roman soldiers on that day said that there had to have been something that happened. It got dark for all that length of the day. And they said, there, you know, even people that were not around Jerusalem, outside of the nations, and it happened in their day, they said that there must have been a God that died for it to be this way. They even knew. Verse 12. And I said unto them, if you think good, give me my price, and if not, forbear. So they weighed for my price 30 pieces of silver. In Matthew's gospel, chapter 27, gives us the same scriptures and gives us the understanding of what happened in that day. Matthew 27 and verse 3, Then Judas, which had betrayed him, when he saw that he was condemned, repented himself. I've heard people say, Well, now he didn't repent to the Lord. He repented to himself. <laughs> That's the same concept. That's what that means. He repented unto the Lord. 
and brought again the thirty pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders. Four, saying, I have sinned. You see, this is a, a place where Judas recognized that he had made that mistake. And if you read over there in Acts chapter 2, you'll find what happened to, to Judas. He said, saying, I have sinned in that I have betrayed the innocent blood. And they said, what is that to us? See thou to that. And he cast down uh, the pieces of silver in the temple and departed and went and hanged himself. Again, excuse me, in, in, in Acts chapter 1, I said chapter 2. In Acts chapter 1 and verse 18, you'll find exactly what it was that happened. He didn't hang himself. He had a lot of help. Verse 6, and the chief priest took the silver pieces and said, Is it not lawful for them to put them into the treasury because it is the price of blood? This is in Zechariah 11. <laughs> Seven, and they took counsel and brought with them, bought with them the potter's field to bury strangers in. These are your foreigners that the dead bodies would go in. Verse eight, wherefore the field was called the field of blood unto this day. Nine, then was fulfilled that which was spoken by Jeremiah the prophet, saying, and again, Jeremiah spoke this. He didn't write it. He just spoke it. The prophet saying, and they took the 30 pieces of silver, the price of him that was valued, whom they of the children of Israel did value. And they gave them for the potter's field as the Lord appointed them. So we have here in verse 12, back in chapter 11. So they weighed for my price 30 pieces of silver. That's all that he was worth to them. Hmm. Verse 13. And the Lord said unto me, Cast it unto the potter, a goodly price that I was praised at of them. And I took the thirty pieces of silver and cast them to the potter in the house of the Lord. Verse 14. Then I cut asunder mine own staff, even bands, that I might break the brotherhood between Judah and Israel. And that's exactly what happened, that Judah and Israel were separated at that time. But you take in the latter part of Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 15 on down, it talks about how that Judah and Ephraim, Israel, will be joined back together again for God's glory. Verse 15, and the Lord said unto me, take unto thee yet the instruments of a foolish shepherd. Verse 16, for lo, I will raise up a shepherd in the land, which shall not visit those that be cut off, neither shall seek the young one, neither nor heal that that is broken, nor feed that that standeth still, but he shall eat the flesh of the fat and tear their claws in pieces. This is speaking exactly of the Antichrist, how he will come and what his position will be. How hard is it for somebody to understand that the Antichrist will come before our Messiah? We all know that in 1 Corinthians 15 and 52, it tells us that all will be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. When? At the last trump. At the furthest trump out. The seventh trump. When Jesus comes. So if we are still here in the flesh, and this shepherd, he said, For lo, I will raise up a shepherd in the land which shall not visit that which be cut off. What kind of shepherd is that? Neither shall seek the young, nor heal that that is broken, nor feed that that standeth still in the stall. He's not going to even feed them. He's just going to let them wither away. <laughs> but he shall eat the flesh of the fat and tear their claws in pieces. We are to stay focused. We are to stay focused. 
Focused on what, Brother Randall? Focused on how these things are going to transpire. For it says in Revelation chapter 20 and verse 6, he said, Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. Not the shepherds that stand in the pulpits today, but these that know the word of God, that understand that there is a Antichrist coming first, and that we are to wait upon the true Lord. He that endureth to the end, the same shall be saved. Again, here in verse 16, he said, uh, Nor heal that which is broken, nor feed that which standeth still, but he shall eat the flesh of the fat and tear their claws in pieces. Revelations chapter 9, verse number 4. He's talking about these people here. He said in verse 4, And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing nor any tree. Why is that? Because he's talking about locusts here. That's what locusts do. Locusts eat greenery. He said, but you're not going to do that. That's not what I want you to do. <clears throat> neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their forehead. He's talking about these lost sheep here that have no desire, these here that, uh, that have no desire to study God's word. Verse 17, verse 11, or chapter 11. Woe to the idle shepherd that leaveth the flock. The sword shall be upon his arm. And upon his right eye, his arm shall be clean dried up, and his right eye shall utterly be utterly darkened. God is going to take away the power from these men and women, those who stand and do not feed God's people, do not teach them the word of God. How hard is it to teach God's word? It's not that hard. Why they don't do it? I don't understand. God don't understand either. He said, I've placed them into this position, given them opportunity, given them a, 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 a platform to stand upon, and, and many people to come. But yet they feed not the flock. They have their pride. Their pride is overriding that what is important. The Bible teaches me, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven. And his righteousness. And all these other things will be added unto you. Don't worry about where your income's coming from. Don't worry about how much your uh, ministry is going to grow. Don't worry about those kind of things. You teach the word of God. Teach God's word line upon line like it ought to be. And God will provide. God will do that. He's done that in this ministry. We've tried him. I set out a fleece. And I asked God. Father, if I do thy will, will you make sure that this ministry flourishes and grows? God has. We give all the honor and the glory to God. I have done nothing. God has done it all. We have just followed the directions that God has asked. We thank him this morning. What a wonderful God we serve. All right. Zechariah chapter 12 and verse number 1. The burden of the word of the Lord for Israel, saith the Lord, which stretcheth forth the heavens and layeth the foundations of the earth and formeth the spirit of man within him. <laughs> God's given his credentials here. What a resume, eh? <laughs> he's uh, he's, he's a, a great God. He's a God that can do all things. Why would one not listen to him? Verse 2. Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of trembling unto all the people round about when they shall be in the siege, both against Judah and against Jerusalem. 
this uh, cup of trembling is a cup of uh, intoxication. It's what God's going to give them. <clears throat> around, uh, unto the people round about, when they shall be in the siege, both against Judah and against Jerusalem. Verse 3. And in that day, what's the day? The day of the Lord. In that day will I make Jerusalem a burdensome stone for all people. <laughs> all that burden themselves with it shall be cut in pieces, though all the people of the earth be gathered together against it. In Matthew chapter 24, Christ has told us in verse 15, He said in verse 15, Matthew 24, he said, When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place. Whoso readeth, let him understand. Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. <clears throat> Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. 19, and woe to them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days. He's talking about these here in Jerusalem, this burdensome stone for all people, these people that will not study the word of God, these that enjoy listening to a fairy tale, they enjoy listening to this any moment doctrine, this idea you know, the rapture theory, those that have that inside their minds, those that are fixed on this rapture theory, you know this is the first signs of the mark of the beast. For when it comes to that time, when the abominable will set where he ought not, they're going to flock to him. They're going to assume that he is Christ. They do not know that the rapture theory is a, is a lie. They do not know that it is just a theory. They assume that it is the way of God. And they insert the rapture of the church in virtually every scripture that they can. They beat them over the head with it. That's why he said in verse 3, In that day will I make Jerusalem a burdensome stone for all people because of the Antichrist that sits there. Verse 4, In that day, what day? The day of the Lord, saith the Lord, I will smite every horse with astonishment and his rider with madness, and I will open mine eyes upon the house of Judah and will smite every horse of the people with blindness. He's going to open his eyes and see those who claim to be of our brother Judah that have taken over and encamped themselves round about that area. He's going to open his eyes and let that be known. That's what he said. And I will smite every horse with blindness. That great fear, that's what that word blindness means. Over here in Revelation 11, in verse Verse number 11, I believe it is. Yes. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered into them, and they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them which saw them. And that's what he's talking about here with this astonishment and with this blindness. Verse number 5, back in Zechariah 12. And the governors, these are the uh, leaders of the Antichrist, the governors of Judah shall say in their heart, the inhabitants of Jerusalem shall be my strength in the Lord of hosts, their God. Six. In that day, the day of the Lord, will I make the governor of Judah like a hearth of fire among the wood and like a torch of fire in a sheath. And they shall devour all the people round about, on the right hand and on the left. 
and Jerusalem shall be inhabited. Again, in her own place, even in Jerusalem. On that day, they will be inserted. The election will be inserted into Jerusalem in that day. These are the elect of God's people. Verse 7, he said, The Lord shall, excuse me, and the Lord also shall save the tents of Judah first, that the glory of the house of David and the glory of the inhabitants of Jerusalem do not magnify themselves against Judah. At this time, this is when the Kenites will be smitten. They'll be destroyed and taken away from Jerusalem at that time. Verse 8. In that day shall the Lord defend the uh, inhabitants of Jerusalem, and he that is feeble among them at that day shall be as David. What a blessing that is. Amen? Be strong as David. And the house of David shall be as God, as the angel of the Lord before them. This is God's promise. This is what he's going to do for those that uh, stand on his word, those that have been taken advantage of. Nine, and it shall come to pass in that day, the day of the Lord, that I will seek to destroy all the nations that come against Jerusalem. And that's God's promise. That's God's promise. Verse 10, and I will pour upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and of supplications, and they shall look upon me whom they have pierced, and they shall mourn for him as for one mourneth for his only son, and shall be in brightness for him as one that is in brightness for his firstborn. Or excuse me, bitterness. I, I, I said that wrong. They should be in bitterness for him as one that is in bitterness for his firstborn. And that's exactly what it is. This, uh, as one that mourneth from playing the harlot, from playing that which should have been waiting upon the Lord. They went and went after the first Christ that came. They did not know to wait. They did not understand. Because they're not fed the word of God. In chapter 11, it teaches you that. Verse 11. In that day, there shall be a great mourning in Jerusalem, as the mourning of Hadaradim in the valley of Megadon. This is, this is the battle of Armageddon, for those that uh, see it that way, they, uh, this battle will take place in that day there around Jerusalem, not only in the valley of Alaska, but also there will be a battle there around Jerusalem at that same time. Verse 12, And the land shall mourn every family apart, The family of the house of David apart, and their wives apart. The family of the house of Nathan apart, and their wives apart. 13. The family of the house of Levi apart, and their wives apart. The, the family of Shimei apart, and their wives apart. 14. All the families that remain, every family apart and their wives apart. So what does this mean, Brother Randall? What, pray tell me, what does it mean that these are going to be apart? At the coming of the Lord, in 1 Corinthians 15 and 52, we will all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. We will drop the flesh. There will be no marriage in the millennial. The only marriage that will be there will be those that will marry that unto Christ. Those that are married on this earth today have wives and husbands. There will no longer be that. Therefore, there will be no gender. There will be no need for that. 
All will be sons of God in that day. And that's what he's speaking of here. And the land shall mourn every family apart, and the family of the house of David apart, and their wives are apart, meaning there will be no more husband and wife. All will be sons of God married unto the Lord, and there's no gender involved in that. And that's what he says here. Verse 14 again, And all the families that remain, every family apart and their wives apart. Again, there will be no more marriage. Now comes the bride of Christ. God has taken time out with his prophets and set them down and had them to scribe these things out and to write it. And he's given it then for a reason, for you. Because you are remembered of Yah. God loves you and he cares about you. And he wants you to understand how these things are going to transpire. You say, well, Brother Randall, we've been over these things time and time again. How come that we continue to go over the same subject over and over again? Well, it's because many people have not understood yet. Many people have not come to the knowledge of the truth. They would rather listen to a lie. They would rather listen to things that tickle their ears. They'll heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. They want to hear these things. They want to be entertained. They want to be fed lies. They don't say that, but that's exactly how it is because if they didn't, they have the same right as you and I. They have the the Bible here and all you have to do, how, how do you read the Word of God? Right here in chapter 10, in verse 1, it tells you, <clears throat> Ask ye of the Lord. That's how you read the Word of God. Ask ye of the Lord, rain in the time of the latter rain. You want understanding from God's Word? If somebody tells you, well, I can't understand God's Word, take them to right here in chapter 10 in the book of Zechariah in verse 1. Ask ye of the Lord. You are one of God's children. You have that right just as much as anybody does. Ask him. See if he won't give it to you. God's good that way. He feeds his children. He feeds that flock that come to the house of the Lord and want to hear his word. That's why David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. It's time to eat. Amen. It's time to be fed with God's Word. We appreciate you. Thank you again for being part of our Bible study hour. This next week we will be in chapter 13 and 14 in concluding uh, the book of Zechariah. Looking forward to that. And uh, also want to make an announcement that uh, May the 21st we will be having our Pentecost service. And we will be having the commune service, have it live. And if you want to uh, take part in that commune service with us, we would love to have you. And uh, maybe uh, some could uh, be a part of our service here and be with us. We'd love to have you. But on May the 21st, uh, on that Sunday morning, uh, we'll be having our uh, Passover, or excuse me, our Pentecost service. And uh, we're looking forward to that. And we appreciate you. Thank you again for all your cards and letters. And uh, all the, the many people that write to us, we thank you and appreciate that. That makes our day. And uh, You study God's Word, and it'll make your day. It'll make your day brighter. It'll make your day come alive and give it purpose. Amen? Amen. All right. Thank you again for this opportunity. Until the next time, may the Lord richly bless.